Hello and welcome to this video. If you're in Math OD2, this is 5.3, and if you are in statistics, this is chapter 3, where we learn about features of data distribution, um, specifically when we're looking at histograms. So this video will cover three main points. It will discuss modality, skewness, and unusual features of histograms. Specifically, when we talk about the modality of histograms, they can be unimodal, bimodal, or multimodal. They can also be not really have a mode at all, and in that case, we say that they are uniform. Um, when we talk about skewness, graphs can be symmetric, which means that they are not skewed in either direction. They could be skewed left, or they could be skewed right. And lastly, we will examine some unusual features of graphs. Specifically, we will look at the presence of outliers. So let's get started. So one feature of the histogram are the peaks. And these peaks are called modes. If a histogram has one main peak, we call it unimodal. If a histogram has exactly two peaks, we call that bimodal. And if it has three or more peaks, we call that multimodal. So in this video, um, I'd like to explain exactly what I mean by peaks. So um, when you look at histograms, depending on the size of the bars, sometimes there might be slight fluctuations or differences. So the whole idea behind looking at a histogram is that you're looking at a smooth curve that would be superimposed on top of the bars. So for example, I would draw perhaps something like this, okay? And then I do what I have dubbed the roller coaster test. Okay, this is kind of silly, but it's an easy way to remember modes. So if you are in a tiny little car going up here on your roller coaster, um, then you really only have one big peak or one mountain. So that's how you can see that this is a unimodal histogram. Over here, again, if we apply our little roller coaster test, we can see that we have one, two little hills there. So that would be a bimodal histogram. All right, let's keep going. So another thing we want to look at when we examine the nature of histograms is to ask ourselves whether the histogram has symmetry. So specifically, we look for what is called bilateral symmetry. So for example, human beings tend to have bilateral symmetry, at least externally. Um, our internal organs, like our liver and stuff, and our, are not um, all symmetric. But it just means that if you kind of drew a line down the middle, that the left half and the right half of the whatever you're looking at, a human being, whatever, are, are about the same. Now, you need to remember when you're working with real world data, that's, you're never going to have perfect symmetry unless you, you know, are taking data from some sort of perfect lab and not from the real world. Okay, so what we're looking for is that if I roughly um, divide the, the uh, graph in half, and here it indicates to fold across the dotted line, that if you can imagine sort of superimposing or putting the right half on top of the left half, over here you can see that each bar, they match up and they're roughly the same height. Again, it's not going to be perfect, right? Because real world, world data is, is not perfect, but it is close to being symmetric. So this is an example of a symmetric unimodal graph. Again, it's unimodal because you have one main mode or hill or peak. Okay, and it's symmetric um, because of the way you can fold it and superimpose the right side of the graph onto the left side. So we would say that this is unimodal and symmetric. Let's look at some examples of graphs that are not symmetric. So just some formal definitions to get out of the way first. So first of all, if we say that data is skewed to the left, that means that it is negatively skewed, okay? 
That means it's going to have a longer left tail and data skewed to the right or positively skewed is going to have a longer right tail. So let's look at some examples of graphs. So the way I like to imagine this, because as you can tell, I, I use my imaginations when I um, do some of these problems. I like to imagine that I started off with a symmetric graph, such as perhaps this curve. And then if you can imagine this being made of some sort of silly putty or some other malleable material, you can almost visualize somebody sort of yanking this left side over and pulling it over so that there's this sort of tail here on the left side. So because of the asymmetry on the left side of this graph, or this, the presence of this left tail, we say that the graph is skewed left. And we can do the same thing for this other graph over here. So if we look at this, again, it's sort of, you can imagine that we started out with something that was nice and symmetrical, perhaps. And then somebody sort of yanked this data over and skewed it to the right, giving it this right tail. So again, this has a left tail, so this is skewed left. And we say that this has a right tail, so it is skewed um, right. All right, the last thing we need to talk about is um, presence of unusual features. So the main thing we're talking about here is outliers. Now, um, in coming sections, we will define outliers more formally. But for right now, we're just going to say that an outlier in a histogram happens when there is a gap in the data. So if I look at this data down here, again, if we kind of do our roller coaster test, you could argue that this is sort of bimodal here. Okay, and of course it's, it's very asymmetric. The, the peaks are not the same height. But then notice that we have this sort of this gap in our histogram and then we have this extreme value. Okay, and again, we call that extreme value an outlier. So right now, it's okay to understand that I'm kind of giving you a sort of informal definition of what an outlier is. So if you're looking at a graph, again, you would look for space between most of the data and another bar or another set of data, for example, here. And of course, you could also have an outlier over here on the left-hand side as well. Okay, and again, in coming chapters, we will explore the definition of outlier more uh, rigorously and more formally and give it a mathematical definition. But for right now, we can just say that an outlier is um, a data point that is very far from the center of the data. Okay. And again, how do you determine, how do you define very far, right? Because it's kind of subjective. We will do that in, in um, feature chapters. So in order to really make sure that you understand these concepts, I would encourage you to pause this video and go through this vocabulary and use the words unimodal, bimodal, multimodal, uniform, symmetric, skewed left, and skewed right to describe these four graphs. Now, each graph should probably have at least two of these words that's applied to it. And also note that some of these words won't be used at all, and others will be used more than once. So take a minute, pause the video, and write this down. Okay, hopefully you pause the video and have your answers. I'm going to talk about this now. So let's look at this first graph right here, the green one. Okay, so again, you can see that there's slight fluctuations here in the heights of the little um, bars. Okay, but we're going to look at our roller coaster test. We're going to impose our smooth curve over it. So how many main peaks do you see? Well, I only see one, so I'm going to call this unimodal. Okay, so that's describing the modality. So all of these terms here describe the modality of the histogram. Now let's move over here and try to describe the skewness. So would you say that this graph is skewed left, skewed right, or symmetric? Well, again, if we employ that test where we sort of 
cut this in half and try to visualize superimposing the right side and the left side or vice versa, you can see that the left side and the right side are more or less the same. So I would describe this as symmetric. All right, let's move on to this graph right here. Okay, this big red graph. So if I did the roller coaster test, it's kind of weird, right? Because it goes up, it goes all the way across, and then it goes back down. Um, so I don't think I mentioned it in a previous slide. This is called a uniform graph. Okay, and a uniform graph is basically a rectangle. Okay, so we don't say that it is unimodal or bimodal or multimodal. It doesn't really have a mode at all. We don't describe it in that fashion. Um, likewise, we do also don't discuss the symmetry of a uniform graph since it's literally just a rectangle. That would be kind of redundant and kind of superfluous to describe the skewness. So we just say that this graph is uniform and we leave it at that. All right, let's do the last two graphs. Again, using our roller coaster test here, we would say that this is unimodal. And then we want to ask ourselves, you know, what is the symmetry of this graph? So if I sort of imagine drawing a dotted line here, you can see that for a while it almost wants to be symmetric, and it would be if it kind of stopped here, but there's sort of this extra space over here. It kind of feels like somebody yanked it to the right. It looks like there's a right tail, so that means that it is skewed to the right. Okay, and then over here, again, we do our little roller coaster test, and it's looking like, once again, we have a unimodal graph. Okay, but, um, um, and similarly to the graph we just did, you can sort of imagine if it was like this, if it followed that red line, it would be symmetric, but this extra data over here gives it a left tail, so we would say that it is skewed left. So that's what you need to know about the shape of histograms.